Hello YouTube again. Uh, today I'm going to do another primer video talking about you know albums by different artists. Uh, today we're talking about Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, um, who have quickly become one of my favorite bands. Um, Um, they, they, they came out during the progressive rock era, right after bands like um, Genesis and Yes and King Crimson had just started, and Floyd had just entered the progressive rock movement as well. Uh, So, um, let's see, so yeah, their first album came out in 1970, they are originally a super group, but I guess after their success they, they made a bunch more albums than they planned probably, but their first album which came out in 1970, when I first heard the first track on it, The Barbarian, I was like, I was like, wow, this is, right, right when I heard the, the drums kick in and the organ started going, bow, 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 bow. I thought, wow, this is, already this sounds like a cool piece of music, and it is The Barbarian, it's one of my favorite tracks by them, um, I like when it, the tempo changes in the middle, and the Emerson starts playing the piano really fast. Um, and it goes right back to the way it started. Yeah, one of my favorite tracks on the album. And Take a Pebble. What can I say about Take a Pebble? Uh, again, another one of their best songs. Um, Just a nice piece. The I like the part in the middle with the acoustic guitar, sounding like a bunch with the clapping, and where it sounds like people at a sounds like a so sounds like someone playing at um, a fire or a camp and they're a camp out or whatever. They're around the campfire clapping along to a guitar song and of course what what can I say about Emerson's piano playing he's one of them he's my favorite keyboardist besides Richard Wright definitely and and Rick Wakeman uh, right those would be my favorites right and I guess you can throw Tony Banks in there too um, But, uh, yeah, great track, uh, written solely by Lake, of course, his vocals on it are great, um, then we have Knife Edge, which glued me directly to it when, I, when the bass line started and he started singing, I was like, it was like, hey, come here, listen to this. We have something for you. And yes, it it's became one of my favorite tracks on the album. Well, pretty much all these are my favorite tracks because I love this album. You see how much I love this album, I'm talking about it. It's already been a few minutes, but I have so much to say about some of these albums. This album sort of changed my life almost, just like, Piper at the Gates of Dawn did, and many years ago, just how Sgt. Pepper did. Um, number of albums have changed me, really. But,
Yeah, knife edge. Love that one. I like the baseline. And like the barbarian, knife edge is based off of a off of um an orchestra piece. I forget the names of them and the composers, but I listened to some of it and yeah, Knife Edge is based off the first movement of whatever it was, I don't remember the name of it. The Barbarian was based off, I think, a piano piece written by whoever. They all have such long names, but that's one thing I like about them. They're adaptations of, um, of classical pieces into rock, making them into prog masterpieces. Um, so then we get the three fates. What can you say? I mean, again, Emerson rocking that pipe organ. Love that. Um, and his fast piano playing. With and then when the band goes crazy towards the end of it. I mean, it, hearing this made me want to start playing keyboard. Uh, really start playing keyboard. Uh, hearing Emerson, how, hearing how Emerson plays, he's definitely a, a favorite musician of mine. Um, so, I mean, Lake is a good musician too, of course, and so is Palmer. Palmer is a very underrated drummer, I think. No one talks about Carl Palmer really. But I think he's he's a really good drummer. Uh, so then we get Tank, which is mostly drums, drum solo with some keyboard synthesizer stuff in it, which is cool, uh, and some cool bass lines by Lake. And then we get Lucky Man. Everyone knows Lucky Man. What can you say? Good song. I, I like the synth at the end. Um, so, yeah, five out of five, definitely. Great album, start to finish. I'll try not to talk this long about the rest of them. Then we get Tarkus as a masterpiece. Tar the title track, Tarkus. Um, one of their best songs, if not the best. Um... There's not much to say, really. It's up there with Echoes and and Dance of the Dawn and uh, Supper is Ready and you know songs like Twenty One Twelve or you know all those songs. Uh, the Prog masterpiece. And then there's um, Jeremy Bender. I love Jeremy Bender. Love the piano and the melody and the humorous lyrics. And then we get Bitches Crystal. Um, a nice rocking song. Um, is the only way next? The, the hymn, the one with the organ, I love that one. Uh, time and a Place, Infinite Space, Time and a Place. Those are good songs, and the last song, Are You Ready, Eddie? Love it. Um, yeah, this one probably gets a five, too. Um, so then... Let's talk about pictures of it at an exhibition, which another great album. Uh, I love Promenade and you know all the other adaptations of this whole thing's adaptations adaptations of classical music. There might be a couple original songs, in it. <sighs> but um, yeah, it's full of nice songs like again Promenade. And Nut Rocker, 
based off the Nutcracker theme. I think it's great. This one probably get a five too. And then trilogy. Oh dear, how do you pronounce the first track? Um I never prepare really. Endless Enigma. However you say it, it's a great song. Um Down, share uh, the title track. It's all good. Guess what this one gets? Probably a five two. Uh, not all these albums will get a five though. Uh, which one's next? Brain salad surgery. Another great one. Jerusalem. Um, Jesus Christ, I wish I could remember these songs. Uh, let's see, what songs does it have on it? Takata, Great, Still You Turn Me On, Benny the Bouncer, all great songs. And then you get the epic Carnival 9, one of the best songs, if not the best. Uh, again, it's up there with all the other prog masterpieces. Close to the Edge, all those songs. Adam Hart, Mother, all those songs. Um, uh, I would just say, I, I love the synth work in it. The, I love everything, really. You know, the, the really synth heavy song I, I, like, I like. Uh, this one gets a five as well. And then, what was after that? Works Volume 1. It might not be some people's favorites, but it's one of my favorites. I really like the Piano Concerto by Emerson in three movements. Uh, Yeah, I really like it. It's, I like hearing him play with the orchestra. And the and Greg Lake's ballads. I like I like all his ballads. Uh What did you love to me tonight and Cela V Um Closer to Believing. Yeah, I like all the songs. And then, I really like Carl Palmer's side, too, um, just as much as the rest of them. I think he did a good job on his side of the record. Uh, the one with the what, 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 uh, what's the, New Orleans and L.A. Knights. I get the two mixed up. I think L.A. Knights is the one that that has Joe Walsh doing scat singing and playing the guitar on it. But, and, and the, the reworked version of Tank is nice too, the orchestra. And then you get two masterpieces. Fanfare for the common man. Everyone, I think everyone, we can all agree this is a masterpiece, right? Yeah, it is a masterpiece. Um... I mean, even the original writer of the song likes their version. And then you get the Pirates. Um, nice epic song. When orchestra. I love the whole album start to finish. Five out of five. Works volume two. Same thing. I love it. Uh, if this one does get a five, it would probably be the last. Yeah, it would be the last one that gets a five. If it does get a five, let's see. What does it have on it? Um, some of the names I just slipped my mind. I'm, I never prepare for this stuff. 
Quartz Volume 2. I like Tiger in the Spotlight. The apple blossoms bloom in the windmills of your mind. I'll be your Valentine. Bullfrog. Uh, brain Salad Surgery. I love Barrel House Shakedown. It reminds me of watching a Felix cartoon with the piano playing. Yeah, I like it. I love watching Over You. That's a... Yeah, it's a nice ballad. So far to fall, Maple Leaf... Maple Leaf Rag. Love that one. I believe in Father Christmas. I like that one. Close but not touching. I like that one. Uh, this would have fit well on Works Volume 1 on the Carl Palmer side. Honky Talk Train Blues. Love that one. Show me the way to go home. Like that one too. Oh, what the heck! Five out of five. I, I can't help myself. I can't give. I can't give Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Not give him a five, or can I? Then we get Love Beach. People say it's the worst prog album of all time. <sighs> Side one. Uh, well. I don't think it's the worst. I don't think. I don't think it's the worst prog album of all time. I don't think it's their worst album. The covers kind of cheesy. They look like the Bee Gees, but I've grown to kind of appreciate Love Beach. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's a big dip in quality, but and they didn't have fun really doing it. I mean, all I want is you. It's. It's all right. It's listenable. Love Beach, same thing, you know. Taste of My Love has some of the worst lyrics. Might maybe their worst. The some of yeah, some of the worst lyrics in their whole catalog. You look hungry. Let me give you a taste of my love. However, it went, which almost ruins the song for me. It's a shame because I like the music in it. Um, what was after that? Uh, oh yeah. Dear yeah, Mr. Gambler, give me five or five or However it went, the gambler. It's kind of funny at the beginning. Uh, dear Mr. Gambler, whatever he says. I mean, yeah, that one's probably better than the first three songs. And then, was it for you? Not bad. And that one's probably better than the first four songs. We're getting progressively better. And then Canario. I love Canario. Another adaptation of classical music. I love it. People say it's cheesy, but... That's kind of why I like it, because it sort of is. But at the same time, it's awesome. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I like how playful it is. And you gotta love when the drums kick in with the bass. And yeah, love Canario. But what people seem to overlook the most is the they had so much of a bad time with side one that they don't pay attention to side two. The memoirs of an officer and a gentleman. Which I think is one of their best pieces ever. Dare I say it? It's all, it's almost as good as, as Tarkus and Carnival Nine. There I said it, and I place it up there with all the other prog masterpieces, epics, whatever you want to call it. You know, close to the edge, Dance of the Dawn, Supper's Ready, Twenty One Twelve, Echoes, Zadam Hartmother, Crazy Diamond. And Tarkus and Carnival Nine. I love it. I love the piano work. Lake's Lake delivers a a fine performance on his vocals. I love Emerson's keyboard work. Carl Carl Palmer's drumming, of course, and people don't like the lyrics. I don't mind the lyrics. Uh, I'm glad they decided to make a long song like that. Because if they would have made another side full of 
let's say six more short songs it would have been a poor album I would say maybe no more than the two or three but hmm well I mean I really don't mind the the poor songs on this album I I I got used to it after a while people don't give it enough of a chance which is understandable I guess cuz I mean they didn't even like it was the point then I don't know but I just think memoirs of an officer and a gentleman is just a great song and I love that little thing at the end the march people say it's same reminds me a lot of Canario people say it's the cheesiest thing ever but that's why I like it cuz it's I don't know, I like when bands experiment with sound. Can you believe it? I like when bands experiment with sound. But yeah, I love, yeah, I like this. I do like this. Uh, I don't know why people wouldn't. It's a shame. Maybe they should have put this on, I don't know. If, if it would have been put on side one, maybe people wouldn't give it such a bad rap but it does fit in my opinion to my ears it does fit better on side two but for others I don't know if maybe the album would get a bit more appreciation because people already left a bad taste in their mouth uh, after side one but you know I find good in just about every album, well not every album, but yes, I'm talking to you, Genesis, calling all stations, and one of the albums I'll be reviewing later by a certain band that I've been reviewing for a while, that's a dead giveaway, uh, but I really do I have appreciation for this album, but it's not perfect by any means. <sighs> I mean, I, I don't know if I can give it a four or not. Hmm. I mean, it's worth it for the last two tracks on the album alone f for me. I mean, but the first four aren't that bad. Before I go on a bit any longer, uh... I give it. A th uh, I want to give it a four, but it probably doesn't deserve a four. I'll give it three and a half stars. How about that? I kind of want to give it a four though, but in reality, it's probably more of a three and a half, maybe even less. But and then they took a hiatus until 1992, Black Moon, which. Mm, I got a couple songs I like, but I mean, it sounded like a totally different band. The the drumming sounded, the production on the drums was too was kind of poor. Uh, Emerson, the stuff Emerson played on wasn't the same, and. Lake's vocals were a bit worn by this time, not his fault, but it sounded like a totally different band. And I don't know, I do, the last two albums, I mean, I think I like Black Moon a little better because it at least has one really killer song, Black, the title track, Black Moon. I love that song. I love the keyboard riff. I love that, but the rest of it, I'm it might be in a few songs, but it'd probably get a two and a half. Let's say that. That's what I'm gonna go with. And what does the cover art have to do with the Black Moon? Oh well. And then 1994, we end the journey with in the hot seat. Which I don't, I don't like as much because 
there wasn't really a track on it that really stood out to me. It was like Black Moon Part 2, but without it, there wasn't really a hit single off of this that you can say, man, this, this is a good song. It redeems it a little bit, but I don't know, I'll give it a solid 2 out of 5. But, I mean, you got it. It's pretty impressive, though. Most of their albums get a 5 star rating in my scale, which. That means they're one of the best bands ever, in my opinion, which they are one of the best bands, in my opinion. I mean, every band makes a clunker or two. But, I mean, this is, that's pretty impressive of them. Uh, yeah, one of my favorite bands. And definitely influential to me. Especially Emerson. Uh... And late too, you can say you can say all of them have some kind of influence on me. But I hope you enjoyed this review before I babble on anymore. Um, I'll be doing more primers because they're fun to do. I love doing these videos. Um, I hope this wasn't too long, but anyway, thanks for stopping by. Stay tuned. I'll be uploading a, probably a bit more because I've been encouraged because I. I had fun doing these videos, so I'm gonna keep doing them. And I have more reviews to do. It's gonna be, this is gonna be a review channel, isn't it? Probably. Well, thanks for watching. Say your opinion. Goodbye. Till next time.